Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to walk you through basically the different testing strategies that you can find in different projects and the idea of this video is it's this is going, probably going to be the first of a two-parter where I'll walk you th through the in my opinion four different ways that you can perform testing on your system so in order to get us started let's just look at this very basic application so all it is is it's a login page that you basically and enter your credentials into and if you enter the correct credentials you go to this page and if we go back and I simply do something that is not correct I go to an invalid credentials page that's the entire application and the purpose of this is not to you know make a nice application or anything like that it's just about testing it's all about testing and showing you the different ways or the different types of tests that are that you may encounter out in the wild as a as a professional developer so let's get into it first and foremost we have our server file which require our application file and does app.listen and basically this is if you're doing Express you shouldn't recognize this it's just booting up the server and I'll touch on why I separate the I, some people like to put this uh, basically have the app.js file or like basically bootstrapping and creating the server right off the bat but I'll show you why in a, just a moment why I don't do this why I do it why I have a dedicated server.js file to actually start the server then we have the app itself which is just an express app with a few plugins I'll walk you through these in just a minute so if you go to the root file all I'm doing is I'm sending a static file called index.html which is this file here easy peasy with the form that we saw earlier and then I have a slash foo, func uh, foo route, we will talk about that in just a moment. And then we have a slash works files, which is we saw earlier that this is the route that we go to. I, as you may have noticed, I, I'm, actually, I'm actually not enforcing the login page or anything like that. I'm not checking for credentials. This is just a toy example. But if you do slash, if you go to the route slash works, you'll see the slash, slash works HTML page, which is this file over here. And that's all it is. It's just an H1 with the word works. Easy PC. And then we have a route for for three, which means basically invalid credentials or you know you're not you don't have access or whatever. It's the same idea there. It's just an H static HTML page with an H1. Easy PC. Okay, and then finally you have the login page itself, which is going to take in the request and the response it uses a function called form body which extracts all of the data that we're posting in the login form and it's grabbing the name and the password from the data that is being provided and then we have a function that is called is logged in and it will evaluate whether or not the credentials are correct and if the credentials are not correct we will be sent to we will be redirected to the 403 page otherwise we will, we will go to the works page that's the entire application and just bear with me this I know this is a trivial application but the goal here is not to show you how to make a nice application it's about showing the different st testing strategies so let's start with the most fundamental test that there is in software development this is the type of test that every almost every single company in the world will ask you to write and that's called a unit test so what is a unit test a unit test is a test that is designed to test a single function or a single piece of code some uh, the smallest possible test that you can write and we have one of those which is called is logged in now what we're doing here is basically that we are requiring the is logged in function we're declaring we're using jest for our testing purposes because hey jest is awesome if you don't know what jest is then then please check it out anywho so our first test is going to just check should return true if name is equal to foo and if password is equal to bar we expect it to be true and then we give is logged in a foo and a foo and a bar and if we now run do, 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 let's just run jest we run more than these tests but as you can see all our tests are passing which is absolutely amazing so we see that all of these tests will pass so the f this is this is working exactly it's logged in it's going to return true if you give it a foo and a bar return uh, it should return false if name is not equal to foo and so this is basically the same test but with fail instead as the 
like as a username input and as we saw earlier this means that this function will return a false and finally we check the password which is going to be fail and it's going to return false as well easy pieces so if we go into is logged in it's a super trivial function and this function is just to illustrate that like, this is you should this is not production code please dear god don't use something like this in you know real applications this is just a toy example to verify if a user has been logged in so basically if you post a name with uh, which is foo and a password which is bar on on this page so if i type in bar here i'll go to the the actual application page and if i type anything else it's going to give me the like the invalid credential page so that's a unit test that's the so that's the smallest test that you can possibly write and most of the time what you want to do is to have any type of logic like login logic or filtering logic or anything like you at that is at the function level to have like you want to have a test for each one of these and you will write like unit tests are this type of tests that are some people will say that they are low value and I can agree to a point that these are you know you write hundreds of these tests if you're doing test driven development where you will like basically write these tests before you actually write the function and for like if your company has the money and the culture around this this is this like most of the time these are the tests you will write but in my personal opinion what is more valuable are that there are tests that are more valuable than these tests in the rule of thumb that i try to apply for unit tests is if if i have a very complicated function or a function that does a lot of, has has a lot of complexity with a lot of uncertainties or basically it's not a trivial thing to to get working then i write a unit test for it otherwise i try to just go for speed because there are tests that are even more valuable and we will cover that in in the next section so that's the first type of test. Now let's talk about integration tests. So an integration test is basically a it's a test that checks an integration to your system and this can be a database, it can be an external service. Let's say that you have um, an emailing service like some people don't you know most people don't want to have to implement their own emailing service so they like use external emailing service providers or something like that in order to send out their emails and an integration test is to just make sure that 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 you know that service is working these tests are a little bit heavier so you don't want to run them all the time when you're like doing your development work but they're extremely useful and very important to to do so the usually what i do is that for me, an integration test to my own system is basically a test that just spins up the server and then I test different like endpoints to just make sure that those endpoints are there and that they're sending back the thing that I am expecting. So we'll, we'll walk through a very toy example of how this, how this works and how it looks. And then I'll talk just a little bit about, you know, some other corner cases that you may, may find to be useful. So let's get into it the first thing I see I'm requiring puppeteer here which I absolutely don't need but fetch I do need so I grab fetch which is just you know a way to do Ajax calls and then I require the application file which is this file here and this is why I don't you know have a single file that immediately spins up my server I have this file that just exports the application file or application object and then I have a server.js file that actually runs the server which is what I'm using if we look at the package.json here we see that I do I basically my start command is going to do node server.js which is this file here and it's going to start up the server the reason why I'm doing this is because if I want to spin up my my server as a part of a test this is the way to do it so basically I require the application I set a server of like a server variable like this and before and, and then I do before all app.listen and the port number that I want to run this on and that's going to return me a, an object which is the server instance and then when I have run after running all of my tests I can do server.close with the asynchronous done callback 
and that will close down my server. This is, you know, if I just had required server.js, I couldn't do this because I'm not export, exporting the app object. I'm just spinning up the server, and then it will be, you know, the pro after finishing my test, the process would still be in memory, which is not ideal. So this is a small tip for me to you. Okay, so in this this scenario, I have a single test, and this is just a toy example. You can make much fancier things like this so, and as you see this comment here don't do this for external integration it will be way too slow this is absolutely true y integration tests are designed as black box tests basically a black box black box test is that the test has no idea of how the logic works on the inside of the application it's just designed to make a call with some data to an endpoint or something like that and then it knows what to expect as a return value. That's all it does. It just It's just a way to check that your endpoints are in place and that your system is behaving in the way that is expected if somebody makes a call to your endpoint. So this is a just a toy example. So we, we're going to make a, a call to slash foo and we expect that if we do that we're gonna get about an, back an object with foo uh, or rather a foo property is set to one and then we simply do an evaluation of, as we saw earlier if I run just that's exactly what we're what we're getting and let's go back to the server code and just yeah as you can see here that's all it does if you do a request to slash foo it's just going to return foo with like set to one that's the entire test. Now these integration tests, you can make them much fancier. You can do like if you're making an API or some sort, or you like say that you have a database, like a one integration test could be that if you push some data to a database that you know you assert that the database has saved the data so that you can get the data. These are think of integration tests as testing something that is outside of your own code or testing that your the like the the entry points to your system and the exit points of your system that's what an integration test yeah, at least by my definition is all about so you can like if i had a database here i would create some tests that check that okay if i save some data to the database can i still get that data and if i update it has it been updated that sort of thing and these are usually like the rule of thumb here is that a unit test is something that you run a lot of the time because these are very quick tests to run. Integration tests should be be part of your build pipeline and should like you mean you can run them yourself if you want to, but they usually take a little bit longer, especially if you have a large system. So it's not like you have to check up on these all the time, but they should be part of your continuous integration and yeah, that, 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 that's at least the way I feel about it. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you acceptance testing, and then fi which is like the next level of what we're doing now. And finally, I will show you BDD or behavioral driven development, which is like, in my personal opinion, the highest level of testing that you can do. So hopefully this was useful to you, and I'll see you in the next video.